there's nothing funny about sales or is everything funny about sales? Let's talk about using humor to cope with rejection on this episode of Closing Time. Thanks for tuning into Closing Time, the show for go-to-market leaders. I'm Val Riley, VP of Marketing for Unbounce and Insightly. Today, I'm joined by Tom Boston. He just left Sales Loft as a brand awareness leader and is on the cusp of his next big adventure. So we've caught him at the perfect time. Thanks for joining us today, Tom. Thanks for having me. Really, really excited for this conversation. I've been looking forward to this one. Great. Um, yeah, we have a lot of guests on closing time, Tom, but it's pretty rare that we laugh out loud. So, you know, you've got you've got a big task in front of you. Well, I'll try. I try my best. I make no promises, um, but I do laugh at my own jokes. So at least there'll be somebody, <laughs> at least there'll be somebody laughing. <laughs> awesome. So the role that you just left, you know, some might liken it to more of like an evangelist role. It isn't very common. So I'd like to understand how you went from starting your career as an SDR and developed it into a brand awareness leader role. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not it's not a common path, right? SDR into into marketing. And there's this term sales influencer which gets kind of thrown around. And I often call myself, Val, an accidental sales influencer, right? That was that was never the plan. Um, the, the only reason for putting any content on LinkedIn as an SDR was to try to book more meetings and try to hit my target. That, that was my, my main driver, right? It was, uh, we roll back the clocks to 2019. I was fresh into a role at sales loft i was unknown in the space and i was selling to salespeople, to vps to ceos and i was just an unknown sdr and i i knew it was going to be tough so i i thought let's let's just get my face out there right i'm sending all these prospecting videos anyway i'm making all these cold calls anyway i might as well put some content on linkedin and help my prospects to join the dots. Oh, I think that's that guy who left me a voicemail. Or I got a video from, from that guy, and I see he's talking a lot on the platform about some of the things he's mentioning in my inbox and on my voicemail, right? Maybe he is legit. Maybe he isn't just spamming people. Maybe he is active in the space and is worth my time, right? Because at the end of the day, all we want from people is a little bit of their time, right? So anything you can do to help justify that and add that credibility, I thought was only a good idea. Um, but then it kind of spiraled and, you know, things started to to kind of pop off a little bit, had some viral hits. And I think the team at Sales Loft understood that actually there's an opportunity to put me in a role that built a, awareness for the brand as a whole and not just as a machine to help me hit my target. I, I feel for you I, as a marketer, marketing to marketers is probably the hardest thing. So selling to salespeople has to be the hardest thing too. <laughs> well, there's pros and cons, right? Because the pros are they understand the dance and you can, you can reference that a little bit. And I used to use that a lot as a seller. I'd even say things like, on a call, I'm going to build some rapport with you now, right? This is the this is the section of the call. And I'd get out a pen and ask them a question about the weather. And I'd say, okay, I can tick off rapport building. We've done that bit, right? Can we, can we move on? And like doing things like that for salespeople, you know, they kind of understood, oh, this person gets me. They they kind of understand we are a similar person. And that that helped me massively. So Yes, it is difficult, but if you can speak their language and, um, you know, help them to understand, oh, yeah, this person's probably been in my shoes, you'll have a much richer conversation, I believe. For sure. So, I mean, I would say there's a need for humor in most every profession, right? We spend eight hours a day at work and, and it's, it's got to have some levity, but salespeople might need it just a little bit more because of the amount of rejection that they face in their everyday work. 
I would agree with that. It's it's not easy, and anyone who tells you that it is are either lying or they they don't know what they're talking about because it's tough. And in the early days of my career, like many others, you would get to the end of the day and you would be, you know, head in your hands thinking how have I got to this stage? Like, what am I, what am I doing to myself? Right. So like that light relief, that, you know, that little bit of comedy in the day, I think it's, it's so important and um, not something I really expected when I started to create content. Right. You know, I, I wanted to make people, people laugh and people feel good, but the amount of messages that I get from people saying, thank you, you've helped me so much this week I was struggling or like when I'm having a a bad day, I, I I watch your videos and I, I'm then spurred on to, to carry on with my role. I'm always like, well, that's amazing. What, what an amazing thing to be able to, uh, to do for, for, for people. Um, because we all need it, you know, it's, uh, it's much needed, I think. So I feel like you've answered this question a little bit. Um, I was going to ask, how do you hope salespeople feel when they view your content? But it sounds like you want them to feel like seen, heard, understood, and and maybe a little inspired. I hope so, because most salespeople will look at, and I will use the inverted commas, the, the influencers on LinkedIn, and they will say, I could never do that. And actually, I'm here to say, look, even if you are an SDR, one of the entry-level positions in your organization, maybe you're bald with a ginger beard and maybe you've got a, a, a silly northern accent, whatever it, whatever it may be, whatever your hang-up is, there is a place for you on LinkedIn and there is a seat for you at the party. Um, I often say this, I... I wasn't invited to the party. I, I very much let myself in. Right? I was like, oh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a place here. And I I'm gonna create some content here. And and hopefully salespeople who look at my content will think, well, actually, yeah, if he if this guy can do it, maybe I could do it, right? Uh, but I think the key thing is in your own way. You've got you've got to be true to yourself. The only reason I even look at comedy is because I, I love it. It's, it's been one of my favorite things for years. I've always enjoyed watching comedy, uh, writing sketches, um, writing scripts. I, I love all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you have to create content that's true to yourself, that feels right for you. For me, that's how you you build a presence. And that's that's how you utilize the platform to help you in your career. So what aspects of the sales profession do you feel like are the most ripe for humor? I know, I know you mentioned, you know, telling someone, Hey, we've just built rapport check. It's done. Um, but, but are there certain aspects of the profession where you feel like, Oh, this, this is prime to, to have a little fun with. You know, there are so many areas. And when I speak to a lot of people about humor and and comedy, they might give me some pushback like um either i'm not funny i often get that or i'm i'm not a funny person or they'll say oh my prospects wouldn't like that or my customers (laughs) i I even had someone say um yeah my prospects are are quite boring which i was like okay but surely everyone can see some humor in some aspect and for me it comes from pain right like Usually, if you're selling something, you solve a problem. So the problem that you solve is normally a pain for your prospects. So how can you use humor to shine a light on that pain to highlight yourself as someone who understands what your prospects are going through, right? Not that you're the solution, because a lot of people on LinkedIn talk about how they're the solution and they're the best. No, no, no. Highlight the the problem and use humor to do that because I don't know about you, but my favorite content on any social media is content that puts a smile on my face. So if you can relate that to a problem that you know you solve, you're undoubtedly 
going to build an audience of people that you can potentially sell to or people that might recognize you when you do sell to them. I often say a lot of social selling isn't even done on social media, right? It's done on the phone. It's done on an email. It's when your prospect kind of joins the dots. Yeah, absolutely. Just anything you can do to get in that initial consideration set is so important. And at the end of the day, even your seller might be in a very boring business, but it's still a person you know, or your buyer is in, um, you know, finance or insurance fields that we don't associate with being terribly fun, but that's still a person who has a sense of humor. So you really just want to tap into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Find the human element. No matter what you're selling, you'll always find a way to to bring a human aspect to the problem. It, it doesn't have to be hilarious. When people say humor, they often think jokes. I, I'm not talking about punchlines. I'm talking about Oh, that's that's real. Like uh, most most humor, most things that are funny are just real. Like it, the, a lot. If you look at my content, there's no punchlines. It's just maybe heightening a conversation that you might have had with a sales manager, or heightening a discovery call you might have had with a prospect. Right? It's the stuff that makes people go, "Oh, yeah, that's I've been through that. That's uh, that's really real to me. That hits me in the." in the fields, as they say. So what was the topic of your most viral video and why do you think it resonated so well? Yes, my my best performing video on, on LinkedIn had over a million impressions and it was only, I think, about 20, 30 seconds. And I was playing a salesperson who'd made maybe 20 calls in the last hour, they'd done a power hour, but then somebody calls them back, right? When they get that call, they start to panic. I'm not sure which of the many people I've just called are ringing me back, but I can't let them know that. So they answer with, oh, hello, thanks thanks for calling me back, right? And they're frantically trying to find on the CRM, who is, who is this person? Um, the whole video was the sales rep just kind of, blagging their way through oh no i've got you yeah i remember yeah I, I, i've got you here right and in the background you had um, some classical music you had vivaldi with uh with violins right so it was very dramatic but i think that video again did well because lots of sales reps watched that video and they were like that's me i have done that i have made 50 calls and had one person call me back Maybe it's an unknown number and they have to pretend the you know, pr pretend that they they know exactly who that is. So that that was my my biggest video so far. Awesome. You've you've been able to carve out a personal brand around humor. Um you mentioned earlier, you know, it's important for salespeople to identify their personal brand. Um, why is that? What what advantage does a salesperson get if they have determined and established a personal brand? Well, in in this kind of modern world of AI and automation, actually being human is not just something that is a nice to have, right? Oh, that's quite a a, a personable rep, or like I see a human element to them. It's actually necessary, right? Because we see robots are now reaching out to to prospects. So you need to, as a salesperson, make it very clear that you're not AI, that you are a real person, and that you have an opinion, and that you're active in the space. So those those kind of things, for me, the the only way to do that is to build a personal brand, is to consistently create content that showcases who you are has some of your personality in there as well because let's again think about humanizing the process am i going to take a 15 minute meeting with someone who i don't think they've they're very interesting no right i want i want it. my time is precious and i'm only going to give that to people that i think okay yeah 
that looks interesting to me, or they seem to be an interesting person. So, um, yeah, I think it's so important. And a lot of sales reps don't put the attention into that, right? They'll just focus on selling, traditional selling. They're not bothered if they look like an interesting person on on social media, right? I'm just going to make a load of cold calls or I'm going to send some emails. But actually, the personal brand is a is a complement to the sales process. And it and it works in tandem. That you you need to do both. And I think I'm certainly proof that when you do, when you get it right, not only do you see success from your outbound process, but you start to get inbound leads as well. And that was a really great moment for me, Val, when I said to my wife, I've cracked, I've cracked the system. I've, I'm an outbound seller. People recognize me when I call them and I'm getting inbound leads on social media. You know, it was like, I felt like I'd created fire. It was magic. As a marketer, I can genuinely say I love it when sales reps do outbound and have success. So you're you're speaking to my heart. Love that. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm a huge champion of uh, of those uh, you know SDRs right now who are who are still still crushing it, still finding creative ways to to break through the noise. You know. So if I'm a sales rep and I need a bit of humor in my day, what's the best way to find your content, Tom? Well, the great thing is there are not many bald Tom Bostons on LinkedIn. So I'm, I'm quite easy to, to find. Um, but, you know, I'd also encourage you to, to look at things like hashtags, right? So look at things like sales humor, um, you know, sales comedy, whatever it might, might be, and find the, the creators that are putting content out there. Um, because I'm not, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, right? You know, and that's the great thing about humor. It's often subjective. Um, so yeah, find those creators that put a smile on your face. Make sure that you ring their bell. You can do that on LinkedIn now, right? You can top right hand corner, you can click click their bell and you'll get notified when they, they post content uh, and get that perk in your day. But yeah, if that's me, happy days. Awesome. Tom, I think you've inspired our listeners to either create a personal brand or take up stand-up comedy. So I guess we'll see what the results are. <laughs> you could do both, right? I think that's that's the that's the future. Let's let's combine those things. I tweeted that recently, right? A sales conference with stand-up comedy. This is a this is a vision of mine. I'm gonna try and bring sales and comedy together in some some beautiful way in the future. So watch this space. Awesome. Tom, thanks so much for joining us on Closing Time today. Appreciate you, Val. Thank you so much. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Remember, you want to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss an episode, and we'll see you next week.